Louise Clarkson Whitelock was an American poet and illustrator. Born in Baltimore in 1851, most sources say 1865, in 1878 she married Baltimore lawyer George Clarkson. In 1890 she was a founding member of the Women's Literary Club of Baltimore, where she remained until 1897. She wrote children's books of poetry, such as Fly Away Fairies or Little Stay at Home and Her Friends, as well as books of flower-themed poetry, which she herself illustrated. Her one novel, The Shadow of John Wallace, which seems to have slight instances of magnetic personality and clairvoyance, was published in 1884. She died in 1928. Today we will review her 1895 collection, A Mad Madonna. A Mad Madonna has a strange, beautiful young woman wandering the roads leading to Rome, with her babe in her arm, looking for Raphael who painted her 300 years ago, seemingly not understanding, or not wanting to understand, that he has been dead all this time. Seeking oblivion, the immortality of Raphael's painting of her as the Madonna denied her, along with the story of the suffering artist also named Raphael, who is not even a shadow compared to his famous namesake of three centuries ago. A bit of Delft has a young woman, obsessed with Dutch porcelain, convince her father to take her to Delft so she can obtain the secret of its blue pigment, which she does by promises of immense orders of porcelain. While going to the porcelain factory, she falls in love with one of the makers. And the only fantastic element here is that she sees his vision as he lays dying at home and draws a perfect likeness of his face onto a tile, which is the only thing she has to remember her first love. In Ignoto, Emily Northcote is visiting the Pitti and Uffizi galleries in Florence, despite her mother's lack of support for artistic endeavours. While there, she comes across a strange man wearing a very old-fashioned get-up who seems to be hovering in front of the Ignoto. The paintings with painters are forgotten, but there seems to be more to him than being simply crazy like Emily's mother assumes, and sending a chaperone to follow her daughter doesn't seem to help. Love's House is the story of Marion Trust's marriage to Chester Fairfax, and their semi-adoption of Marion's young cousin Muriel. After a few years, due to a poisonous suggestion by Chester's mother, Chester finds himself falling in love with Muriel. He is very miserable about it, but Marion manages to know, because she is so in sync with her husband, she sees the vision of Muriel that tortures him in his mind as he sighs and mopes. But then Muriel goes into a convent and everything is okay. Apollo has Eleanor Randall visit Naples and be insufferable. You see, she meets a man, Clarion Vaughan, who to her is a perfect likeness of the Apollo Belvedere. The two get affianced, but Eleanor keeps treating Clarion terribly, saying he's shallow and has no soul, and saying to herself he is not a man but only a type, fawning over his perceived shallowness because it fits him being the earthly version of Apollo. She is really insufferable and in the end, after she says she could never marry him despite saying she would never go back on a word, Clarion is drowned. From another country is a tedious thing ruined by not stopping when it had the chance. Paul Hoffman, a classic painter, is visiting a world fair full of fake Grecian and Roman buildings, and meets a woman who seems to have come from the hereafter, from the time of classic Rome. But part two says it's an elaborate prank by the painter's friend Jack, ending with Paul and the woman getting married. The last two stories do leave a bad taste in your mouth. Overall, the fantastic in these stories is rather minimal, with the Mad Madonna and Ignoto being the best.